In this video, what I want to do is I want to set up the user interface for us to be able to interact with a Sudoku board before we use backtracking in order to solve it. So in the last video, we showed how to set up a project. One thing that we didn't do in the project was to delete this module info file. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I don't want this to be a modularized project. It's just going to be a simple project. So I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to open my app file. This is um, where we're going to build our user interface. And what we have right now is we have these Java version, JavaFX label, and scene. I'm going to go ahead and um, delete the first three lines because what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a different user interface in here. And what I'm going to use is, as a basis, I'm going to use something called a grid pane, which is a particular kind of layout. And I'm going to use this grid pane layout. I'm going to create a new one called the constructor. And I'm going to set some of the properties of it before I put it on the screen. So let's import it from JavaFX. Now that I've got the grid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set some layout um, components to it. So I'm going to set the alignment of it so that it is centered. There we go. And I'm going to set some uh, padding. I'm going to set a horizontal gap. There we go. And I'm going to set that equal to 10. And I'm going to set a vertical gap equal to 10. That'll give it some visual space. And let's see what I do wrong here. Oh, I said get, but I want set. All right. Um, and now I'm going to also set some padding. And what I will do is I will create some new insets for this. And that's going to be 25 all around. All right, and then I'll need to import the insets, insets class. Careful you get JavaFX. All right, and great. And then we should be able to add our grid to our scene. And we'll make this be 400 by 400. Let's see if that's good size. All right, and we'll just see if we can get that to run as is now. So come down here and run it as a Java application. Actually, I don't want to run it as a Java application. I want to run it as my Maven. I want to run it with my Maven configuration there. So go ahead and do my Maven configuration. All right, so I've got a window. It's 400 by 400. There's a grid there, but there's nothing in the grid. So let's put some things in the grid. So now we know that Sudoku is a, uh, has a 9 by 9 uh, structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, some text fields to hold our data. So text fields are the user interface component that's available to us from JavaFX. And I'm going to make a two-dimensional uh, array. We'll call them text fields so we know what we're talking about. This is an, uh, an instance variable of the app class. And we'll use our constructor to just create that right from the get-go. And it's going to be 9 by 9 because that's how big Sudoku is and that never changes. Make sure we import the right class. All right, so now that we have this text field, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, insert the text fields into the grid. And to do that, I'm going to need a, um, to, a, a nested loop. And I'll do the row. The row is 0. And while the row is less than 9, we'll do row plus plus. Let's give that some space so we can see what's going on. And we're going to do the same thing with columns. We'll do a C for columns. We'll close out those loops. All right, and in the inner loop, what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a new text field. And we'll use what's called T. And we'll use the constructor text field in order to do that. And we'll go ahead and set a property of that. Set alignment of that equal to center. Once we have that object, we're going to go ahead and store a reference to that object in our instance variable. We'll find this, we'll find a particular instance, a particular row and column that we're interested in storing it. Actually, we're going to do it the other way around. We're going to do row on the right and column on the left since column is um, uh, typically the x, so we'll keep it sort of column and row as x and y. And we're going to set that equal to t. And then we're going to, so that'll store it, our text field in a local interface, but then we're also going to put it into our, that will store our text field in a variable that we have access to, 
we will also put it into our user interface. We'll put T into position C and R. Eclipse is trying to help me out. It's not helping me. There we go. All right. So now if we run that, oops, also trying to run it with the Sudoku version. Now we have a user interface where we can put values and it looks pretty good. We could, you know, we could make it a little fancier if we wanted to, but for now that's going to work great. So now we have a grid of text fields. Let's go ahead and add a button to clear those text fields. So that'll be to sort of reset our game. So we'll make a button called button and we'll call it, uh, let's call it BTN. And we'll say that's going to be a new button and the label that we want on our button is going to say clear. And we will we need to put it into a little container so that we can insert that into the grid. So we'll make um, a horizontal box, um, call it HB box. Make that a new HB H box H box and give it a size of 10. We'll go ahead and make sure we import the right button. Make sure we import the right H box. Great. Spacing of 10. Uh, we have our button, and now what we want to do is we want to add our button to our box. So insert it in there so that it's connected. There it is. And we'll add to that our button. All right, so that puts the button into the box. Now we've got the box, so let's give the box some parameters. Let's make it um, uh, put it in the bottom left of our user interface. And um, let's add it into the grid then as well. So we'll say grid.add and we'll put the button. HB box, sorry. Well let's see, but let's use a different, let's use a different interface here. What this is going to do is it's going to say, I want to put that box, I want to put this element box, and I want to put it at column zero, row nine, so down at the bottom below all our text entry boxes. And I want the I want to fill up three columns and I want it to fill up one row. So it's going to like cover a few of those, Sudo those Sudoku boxes. So let's go ahead and run it. And you can see, save our changes, you can see where we added our button. There we go, there's our clear button. Now we're not doing anything, when we hit clear, nothing happens, so we need to add that next. Now that we have our button, let's go ahead and add some um, functionality to that button. So the way we do that is we use what's called a lambda function or an anonymous function in Java. We haven't really talked about that too much, but we'll, do, we'll go ahead and put one in. So we'll attach a function that gets called when our button is pressed, and that has to have a format of an event handler and it is going to take an action event as its type and when it is called there we go let's add that final parameter that final parenthesis all right and then the body of the function what we want to do is we want to create a little class an anonymous class and we is it an anonymous class no we're just we're creating a class okay and it's going to have a handler in there, and it's going to handle the action event. And this is going to, going to override the default class. And when we handle that event, oops, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Okay. Now we have to say what is it that we want to do when we handle that event. Well, what we want to do is we want to go through our text field and we want to reset all the values. So I'm going to copy this code up here. I'm going to put it here because we're going to go through the rows and columns. And rather than creating a new text field, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the text fields that are already stored. We'll look at our array and we're going to take the text field and we're going to set the text equal to the empty string. And we're also going to set the style of that. The way JavaFX works with styles is it uses something like 
um, CSS. So we're going to set the background color equal to white. <clears throat> so it's already white, but later on we're going to use that background color to signify other stuff. So we'll make it white explicitly. And let's see, what do we need to do? We need to import some elements. So action event from JavaFX and event handler from JavaFX. And we save that. And now let's clean it up a little bit. And now when we run it, we have a clear button. And if we type something into our elements, we hit clear, they get erased. We can put something new in there, clear, they get erased. Okay, great. So our clear button functionality is built in. Okay, I think the last thing that we want to do for our user interface is to create a solve button, a button that will launch our backtracking solver. So for that, we're going to add another button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, all the code that we've got so far, because it's very similar, what we're going to do for our solve button. So I'll come up here from clear on down. And we've got the button there. So we can um, go ahead and reuse that button component. But this button is going to be called solve. And we can reuse our box component. And that's 10. That's fine. And we'll go ahead and add it. Add the button to the box. <clears throat> and we'll set our position to the right side instead of the left side. And instead of being put at 0, 9, we'll put it at 6, 9, so it's on the right. And then when we add our um, event handler, we're going to change this eventually to actually do the work of solving. But for the time being, just to see that it works, let's go ahead and just give it um, a gray color so that we can go back and forth just seeing that it's working. So we'll make it 200, 200, 200, save that, and then run our program. And if we do one, two, we can clear it. And then we can do one, two, and if we solve it, it sets the background to gray, and it clears it as well. All right, so we know it's working. Um, and I think that's where we want to stop for our user interface for the time being. We'll have to come back, and we'll have to instantiate. We'll have to make our solve button actually do the solving. But before we do that, I think we need to build out some of our um, backtracking solver capability. All right, great. Thank you. <laughs>